Yes, out of all the Disney sequels out there, I ended up getting stuck with this one. And it's actually kind of funny whenever I would go and discuss with my friends or I would talk with whoever regarding The Hunchback of Notre Dame 2 because many of them would actually tell me that amongst all the direct-to-home media Disney sequels out there, this is apparently the worst of the bunch. Like, a lot of people would definitely go as far and say that it is one of the worst, but I have often heard some claims that this is the worst of the worst. Now, personally, I would actually go and debate that because I feel like if we are going to talk about the absolute worst of them all, I would go and say it would be Belle's Magical World and probably also Milo's Return. But technically, I do understand why some people might not necessarily count those because they're not really movies per se. They're more like pilots to a canceled TV show that Disney decided to bunch them up together and to sell them as movies. So technically, they do count on the same camp, but I understand why some people wouldn't necessarily count this. But when it comes to Hunchback 2, on the other hand, this isn't meant for like a pilot or this isn't meant for like a TV show or anything like that. This is a legitimate feature length. Well, even feature length would be debatable because it's only about an hour long, but a uh, feature length direct to home media sequel. And amongst those in that category, this is often said to be the worst of the bunch. And honestly, that kind of scares me considering that I love the first Hunchback of Notre Dame. It's easily amongst my top 10 favorite Disney movies. And I would even go as far and say that it's about as good as like some of the best ones of the Disney Renaissance, like with The Little Mermaid, Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin, The Lion King. Like it, it really is that amazing to me. It's a little bit flawed. I wouldn't say it's perfect, but what it did good, it did amazingly. In fact, I actually did a full review on that. Uh, you could go check that out afterwards. So uh, anyways, with all that said, I think it's time that I should actually go and get into this movie. So without further delay, uh, let's go and just uh, set myself up for this. All right. All right. So now that I got everything prepared, it's time that we start the pain in three, two, one, go. Ah, that classic Eisner era Disney Pictures logo. Well, that's always a nice sight to see. All right, well, that, that's a little, it gives us a little bit of hope, a little bit of promise, a little bit of nostalgia. And that nostalgia is immediately gone. Oh, well, okay, it's not, okay, it's not too bad. I, I won't say it's, it's not that bad, but, oh, yeah, this is, this, this ain't the first. Oh, okay, ooh. That Notre Dame Cathedral, uh, eesh, okay, this is definitely not like the first. Okay, oh, we're going to get into something nasty, are we? Oh, I am not looking forward to this. Oh, boy. Oh, come on. Oh, it's okay. Even the animation here, it struggled. Like it wants to try to get that 3D perspective, but it had to force its way into it. It's like, that was not smooth at all. Oh, great. Now it's also going to be, oh dear. Oh. Oh, I regret this already. Oh, dear.
So this is a festival to like rush your way to find a date. Ooh, em Esmeralda, what happened to you? Ooh. Already, this animation is just like ooh. even even the music. It's like no, this Jules Damo thing. I don't like it. I don't like this. I want to go home. How how long it's been? It's not even three minutes, and already I regret and hate this already. This must be like a record. Oh, jeez. Wait, the best of all the best of the festivals? I thought it was the Feast of Fools. Wait, this has to be like the best festival of them all. Do they say that about all the festivals? I, I'm I'm from Montreal, so I know the feeling of like getting like festival after festival after festival. So do they just say that all the festivals are the best festivals? Or I, I don't know. You know, that's probably the one time that I may probably agree with this movie. It's like, yeah, no. What the? Oh, gee, ugh. Oh, Lord. Oh, God. No, no, put that away. That is cursed. Oh, gee, ugh. I, I don't like that quasi. I don't know, like, trying to make the handsome quasi thing? No, that's, that's not okay. Ugh. Uh, I, ugh. Did, did anybody like that? I don't know, like... Like, I do recall that scene does exist, or, like, that little moment, but, uh, I don't know, that's, like, 
it, it, it looked like a counterfeit version of the human Shrek in Shrek Two. Like it, it, it's just like it looks like it looks kind of like that, but there's that that extra element of cringe where it's like, no, I don't like that quasi. Ugh, that's not like even the handsome quasi is not even attractive. That's kind of the irony of all that. So this is the next big character or the next the the new central character we're going to be focusing on. Uh, already it's just uh, uh it's like do we do we need this Madeline? <laughs> is she going to be like this throughout the whole movie because I oh god this uh, yeah yeah stupid stupid you guess well to be fair i mean what isn't stupid that i've been seeing so far So just out of curiosity, do you have a plan to steal a Notre Dame or a cathedral bell? Because chances are it's a lot bigger than you could probably imagine. Ah, it's one of those fake love things. Ah, of course. Like one of those fake love story, like pretend to love, but then she unironically loves him. Yeah, sure. Okay, it's a, it's one of those already. All right. I, w I will give it credit, you know, like just when you think like it doesn't give me a reason, it, like there there's no more reasons to hate this. It adds an extra layer of like, oh, it's going to be one, one of these. It's like, oh, you're going to add this element. Oh, you're going to add that element. It's like, you're going to keep adding more to this to make me not like this. <laughs> and to make me want to like leave immediately. You know, it's kind of a good thing that it actually has a very short running time of about like an hour. Because like even 90 minutes just sounds way too much. Okay, time out. <laughs> Even this already 
just feels way too suspicious. Like, she's not even that good of her job. <laughs> it's like, why would a random person come in and ask specifically to see that bell? It's like, ha has people done this before? Is this something that does happen in, uh, in, in, uh, in Notre Dame? Is this a common thing? Like, I don't know. Like, doesn't it feel like it, doesn't it feel a little too suspicious already? <laughs> Wait, she could see them? All right, did we, did we, did we, do we already establish, like, is this established already in the first movie? Because even that is kind of, like, questionable. That is a good question. Like, okay, is it official now that the, gar that the gargoyles are legitimately alive and that people can see them? Because, like, so far in the past, it's like, Quasi, we know Quasi knows they're alive. We know the goat knows that they are alive. So do we have to add Madeline into the mix or is it like literally everyone knows? I don't know. I feel like that is something that's like really debatable for everyone. <laughs> Wow. What a bitch. I mean, I know probably some people might be shocked that I said that, but I mean, how else can you describe that? Like, you force your way and try to see his face, and then you decide to just, like, freak out and run away. Real nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, Quasi, like, you're, you're too good for her. I think that's the, that's the safe bet right there. And again, like she like I, again, she came in like a complete random stranger saying she came from the circus and is like, oh, I want to see the bell. I want to see that pretty little well-known bell. I mean, come on, man. You know, mir miracles, like, like it takes a miracle to save this movie, to make it actually good, to make it enjoyable, <laughs> to make it, to make it at least somewhere close to the levels of like, oh crap, we got it. We got a song. We got a song going on. Hold on a sec. You know, I, I get that it doesn't even want to try, like, it doesn't try to be on the levels of, like, Stefan Schwartz or, or Alan Menken or anything like that. Which, I mean, like, it knows it can't be on that level, but still, though, like, uh, <laughs> this is, like, it kind of makes me, uh, it makes me miss the first
I just had to double check. <laughs> it's not even 20 minutes, so uh, don't be surprised if this is going to be one of those that I'm going to be like looking again. Oh, no, don't don't try to do camera turns. Don't don't try to move around the camera. You can't. Oh, movie, please. You can't you can't turn your camera around. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> It's already rough to look at this interpretation of Notre Dame country, Cathedral, so don't don't try to like turn around with angles. You you don't have the uh, you you don't have that. But yeah, as I was saying, don't be surprised if this is going to be one of those where I'm going to be continuously looking at the time. Yeah, this may not be like ninety minutes, but. Uh, this yeah already this is going to this is going to be one of those where it feels like it's going to be more than more than 2 hours or whatever Question. Um, where did you get that? That that that's what I want to know. Like, is this like Frollo's old stuff? Like where like that that's what I want to know. It's like where where did the outfit even came from in the first place? Well, well, <laughs> Quasi, open up your options, because if that continues between Phoebus and Esmeralda, you might actually have a second chance. Ah, of course. Like, try to, I get it. Try to add in the element of, oh, let's go and uh, make her like quasi with that kind of storyline, make him the next like Frollo, per per perhaps. But then again, we don't actually see any of that. It's just, it's just for the sake of exposition, because that would require effort to actually show, like, uh, th like to actually show how he is like the next. Um, uh what 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 is it the next frollo you know what i mean oh my god what what <laughs> <laughs> i'm sorry did, i can't be the only one seeing that <laughs> like is she was she just so depressed to the point where she can't even see herself like even her eyes had to go cross-eyed to the point where it's like no i can't <laughs> it's either the depression of her situation or the depression of what she realizes that she's in it ain't the, it ain't the first hunchback it's like oh this is the the sequel hunchback. This is the one that's not in theaters. <laughs> I can understand because like it could happen. But then again, to be fair, like this is not a knock against this because like it does happen even in like the original Disney movies when the characters can go like freaking cross-eyed. The memes have proved it quite a lot.
You know, that's actually an interesting point that I realized. It's like, you know, with these magic shows, kind of like what he just pulled off right there. It's funny how in, in, in stuff like this, they that like in order to do like magic words, they they always do like some kind of like jambled up Latin or something like that. Or is it actually la Latin that they do? Well, to be fair, I don't think when it comes to uh, like with, with Quasi's uh, introvertedness, I guess you could call it like subtlety wouldn't necessarily be his uh, strong suit, especially in a movie like this. <laughs> Wait, what? Wait, we have a buddy song. Wait, we're we're hold who asked for a buddy song here? Uh, excuse me. I I I didn't. Uh, what? Why? Whoa! How? Why? I don't like this. No. Why? Like, was this even like a last second edition or or whatever? It's like. Wh why it's it's you know what it is like just for the sound of it it sounds like a lazy version of friendship like you know that song uh friendship from anything goes it sounds like it's trying to be like that but it's just made up on the spot like while they were having their storyboard meeting or something like that it's just oh okay it's done already oh well then you didn't even give me a full time to rant, but oh, okay, well, uh, okay, well, at least, oh, okay, it's not, okay, it's not even that, okay, it was just like a little pause. Okay. Uh, you know, like, I can't, I can't even give it the bat, the benefit of the doubt, but. Uh, hey. Well, apparently someone did like that musical number because, wow, that really did won her over. You know, by the way, there is one funny thing about Madeline, and I remember, like, with the commercials and stuff like that, or the trailers, like, they really made a big deal of the fact that they had Jennifer Love, Hew Jennifer Love Hewitt in this, and um, <laughs> the, the funny thing about that is just that I remember back when I was a kid, the fact that, like, it had Jennifer Love Hewitt, it didn't necessarily mean that much to me, because throughout my entire childhood, the big thing that I remember Jennifer Love Hewitt the most is the fact that she's Liz in the Garfield movie. And that was back when I was like a major Garfield fan. So like that's why with like the different casting, like either Bill Murray or Brecken Meyer or even like Jennifer Love Hewitt. That's why like I, I kind of remember that the most oddly enough. And this is not a knock against Jennifer Love Hewitt. Like, she's definitely a well-established actress, and she has done some per pretty solid performances, but it's just funny to mention how, like, the big thing that, from my entire life, that what I remember the most from Jennifer Love Hewitt is her performance as Liz, or the fact that she is the live-action Liz from the Garfield movie. Uh, and then she's also Madeline in Hunchback 2. But then again, so far from what I'm seeing... Yeah, I think I'd remember. I'd rather remember Jennifer Love Hewitt as Doctor Liz than as Madeline.
Are you just giving that out for free or? Like that is, yeah, that is a good question. Like, why are you giving that souffle out for free? That's a big freaking bowl of souffle. Like, are you just handing out, is it just for samples or like, what do you like? Do you owe a debt to Quasi or something? Like that? I I don't know. I just felt like it. It was just weird. Weird, honestly. You mean on top of the cathedral? Like, didn't we already get that view in uh, in the first? You know, I just got to say, like, if we're going to hear medieval Paris, I don't think it sounds as lovely as uh, as this. I don't know. It doesn't beat the view from like on top of uh, Notre Dame Cathedral. Oh, OK, well, that there's a view. OK, guess we're, we're going to move on to the next. No time to indulge on the. Uh, the beauty of the view or anything like that. Okay, let's just let's just go. I guess. I guess the movie is even aware that it has a short running time, so like no no time to uh no time to explain anything. Just go, 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 go. <laughs> Wait, what? Another one? Now? Really? Do we need? What are, are you gonna do? Like another? Can you feel the love tonight? Kind of song? Like are the gargoyles gonna be like the Timon and Pumbaa in there? Really? Do we need this? Oh. Oh no, no, no movie, no. Ugh. Okay, I want all the people who criticized, um, like all those people who criticize a guy like you, I want you to apologize right now. Because I think we can all agree by now th this is worse like this is supposed I, I think this is supposed to be this movie's version of a guy like you but this is way worse than a guy like you oh my god at least a guy like you is fun this here with the fa la 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 crap it's like no like i no no please stop come on movie no I don't want to hear this fa -la, la crap. Just stop. No, please. Even God is pissed off at this. Even God has to do something to stop it. So he, he just hurled a bunch of lightning and says, Okay, that's it. I don't want to hear any of this fa la 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 bullcrap. Even, even like, even the good Lord just stopped everything to say, and he shall smite the wicked. Must be a warning sign to the, uh, to the to, to the songwriters
Really? You mean like the metaphor of this whole movie? You know, one thing I am surprised about, I was expecting, like, I knew that this is kind of like the moral of this movie, but I'm kind of surprised that it doesn't go into it that much. Like, I, I thought they would hammer it again and again and again, but in this case here, not like, okay, it doesn't do so, but they kind of forgot about, like, I guess they would forget about it because, well, it doesn't have, like, I'm not expecting this movie to have that much of an, expe uh, like, a, uh, like, to not have that much of a memory or, like, to even remember, like, what's the point of all this? <laughs> but, you know, I, I gotta say, like, about, like, wh what is it? Lafayette. That, that, that's the name of the bell? Or whatever, but um, do you realize, like, with all the cr with all the jewels that's in there and stuff like that, th this is supposed to be a rel that Quasi should ring, right? But that makes no sense. Like, it, it, it feels kind of messed up in there. It feels more like an art exhibit because, like, with all the like the beauty and the jewels that are encrusted in in there, like, if you ring it, all these jewels, like, they're gonna break. Like, it would just really make things up inside, like, it would just break the things that are inside the bell. I don't, I don't get it. Like, am I the only one that's a bit upset about the inconvenience of the, of, of the whole bell? I mean, like, yeah, you want to have a bell, like, that could also be, like, you could either have, like, a beautiful looking bell that's on the inside or have a functioning bell. You cannot have both. Seriously. Like, each ring would cost, like, a th it, it would be like ten thousand dollars per ring, or at least ten thousand dollars in repairs per ring. <laughs> Look at me, I, I, I'm, I'm ranting about a godforsaken bell in a Disney direct-to-home media sequel. What the fridge has my life come to? Nope, he's dead. All right, movie's over. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> oh, no, unfortunately, no, there's still more movie. How much more? Uh, Still, yeah, still more. S still a good amount. Uh, I just want to go home. I'm technically home, but still, I just want to go. I have crap to do. More so than just watching this. Like, I could just be watching the first movie instead. You know, one thing I will say, it's kind of funny how, like, you could tell that De De that Demi Moore in this, like, just does not care about this. She's like, uh, like, even, De like, you could tell in Demi Moore's voice, it's like, she has better things to do than to be in this. I mean, granted, like, I could already hear, like, some of the voices in here, like, even Kevin Klein, actually, you can hear that he is enthusiastic, uh, enthusiastic about this, but but still, it's it's just like, like it's just to me more in in particular, like you can hear in her voice, it's like, okay, all right, let's just get through these lines.
Wait, move, movie, 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 movie. Hold on a sec. You need to, you need to keep focus. Like, what are you more connected to? Like, are you connected to uh, Hunchback or Beauty and the Beast? Because now you're just reenacting that scene with, uh, like, the scene just before the mob song, you know? He's not the monster, Gaston. You are. Oh, La Fidel. Okay. Oh, I just realized it's like, okay, that's the name of the bell. I keep, I, what did I say before? Freaking Lafayette. I still got Godforsaken Hamilton in my mind. <laughs> Are we going to prepare for the heartbreaking scene or because you can't have a romance movie without that one little moment where like all oh, the, the main character is heartbroken and you feel like all oh, the love is like lost and stuff like that. Ah, so that's how we're going to do the big breakup scene. Okay. I see. Okay, so how long is it going to be until uh, we can have that breakup scene and then like come back together and stuff like that? Or do we have that long? Okay, we yes, no, maybe. Eh.
So you're just going to husk that massive thing, like, just carry it with you? Like, again, how are we going to... But, no, for real, though, it's it, it, is it like, are they just going to carry that big thing with them? I think it would just be this, like, it, wouldn't it be a little too obvious? I mean, like, seriously, this is not something that they thought through. Like, you want to try to, you're stealing that big-ass bell, but, like, people are going to notice. People are going to know that you're going to run away with what is possibly the most, pr what 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 is said to be the most precious bell in the godforsaken cathedral. So, so like, uh, uh, I don't know. Maybe I'm at the point where it's just like, even the head, even the henchmen are like fed up with it. Is that how bell? Wait, <laughs> that's not how bells work, though. <laughs> that's I. It's it's just how. Well, I mean, technically, you could still have the festival without your expensive bell, but. Ah, there we go. Okay. I knew there I knew there was that breakup scene. There it is. Wow, okay. I I don't think even Phoebus really cared about the matter. It's like, yeah, I'm sorry. All right. Anyways, take her away. Well, Yeah, I know that animation of that animation of you trying to walk up the scare the, the stairs would make me cry too. I understand. Well, didn't they say it was like a limited time or something like that, or? Oh, okay, okay. Well, I guess I could take back a little bit about, like, how to steal that bell. Okay, underneath, I guess. Okay, I, well, I mean, that's, that's a, that's a big-ass catacombs, I gotta say. Like, I've actually been to the catacombs in Paris, and, it, well, at least, okay, uh, at least the tourist section of it, but I'm, is the catacombs even that huge? At least big enough to have like a river that you can actually roam across with a with, with a boat and fit a giant bell there.
Well, then have your men like inspect up and then you guys can go down. You, you, you guys can split up, you know. I mean, there are ways you could go around. Wait, did I, wait, was that just me? I don't know. Like it was just like, I, well, I guess you could call it a glitch per se, but it's like, was there like a little moment where you don't see underneath the boat? I don't know. It, was that just me? It's just like a, a quick little moment, but was that, was that a mo? I don't know. What's, was that? Uh, maybe, I don't know. Yeah, I think honestly, I feel like at the wait, what? That's that's all that that's all it takes. Just say there's more to me, and that's all you gotta say to really. Well, that doesn't necessarily take much to really convince Quasi in that case. All right, that's it. Okay. Well, that that's the lesson for today. <laughs> you want to try to you want to gain someone's trust? Just say that there's more to you and that's pretty much it. She'll just jump on the boat and just say, see ya, and that's it. <laughs> you never get to see Zephyr again. You never see the bell again. And that's pretty much it. <laughs> uh, if, uh, if only, you know. <laughs> just, to, just to give that harsh lesson about love, but nah, this kind of movie, not the kind that would do that. Wait, that's it? Wait, okay. You, what the, what's the, wait. That's not the point. What, 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 what's the point of that? It's like, okay, if the guards could just like walk there and just like grab him. Like, what? 
Like, okay, I get the point is just to save Zephyr and stuff like that, but still... Oh, and there's the bell. Yep, ringing that famous bell. <laughs> and all the but all the crystals are just going to shatter. <laughs> and all the entire budget needs to be, like, spent for the... You know, all the budget needs to be spent on that bell. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, this movie. Just, uh... You know, maybe there is some logic that I'm looking way too deep into it. Maybe. But still, though... Oh, wait, what? Oh, wow, they actually do... Wow, they actually do confirm the ship of the GOAT and and Hugo. They they gotta go that far. They, wow. Oh, really? Okay. So they, they do have to do this. Oh, this movie. Oh, even the ho even the horse. We got to give the horse a love interest. Just a last minute addition. Give the horse a girlfriend. Yes, because that that seems to be a major thing. Yeah. Of course, are we going to have like a kissing scene with Madeline and uh Madeline? Can we, all right. Oh, look at that. Or, oh, just like in the freaking song. Are we over? Are we going to give Zephyr a girlfriend? Can we, can we, can we give him? Like, I mean, everyone gets a girlfriend. Everyone's in love in this, apparently. Okay, I'll admit, that's probably the one thing that's probably clever about this. Okay, that one little gag, maybe, but that's pretty much it. I'll give you that one thing. That one, that one gag. All right, that's fine. Rest of this, malarkey. Are we done now? You did your kiss. You did the romance. You gave everyone a girlfriend. Can I, can we go home now? Are we done? We done. Yes. Okay. Yeah. We see. Yeah. But those two are together. Yes. We, we get that. Can we go home now? Are you done? Can you play the credits? Are we over? Wow, like just about one hour. Exactly. Well, yeah, exactly one hour. Like just like a few seconds off of an hour, but still, yeah, we're pretty much done with this. And yeah, uh, yeah, this blows. It honestly really did. And honestly, I just need to ask one question, considering that the whole plot line is supposed to be about Quasimodo falling in love with Madeline. But I, I just really need to ask this. Why do we need to give Quasimodo a girlfriend? You know, that that's what I really want to know. Like, what's the point? Like, or why why is it necessary that we need to give Quasimodo a love interest? I mean, I feel like that is something that kind of breaks a major part of the purpose of the original Hunchback of Notre Dame and the Disney movie, I mean, not the not the novel. It's just like wh why why is it that the plot line specifically has to be the fact that we need to give Quasi a girlfriend? Is is it always has it always been an issue that Quasimodo has been single? Has it is it an issue that Quad that Quasimodo never actually gets the love of Esmeralda in the first movie? That's what I want to know. Like, is this necessary? Do we need to give Quasimodo a girlfriend? Does he need to have a girlfriend? Does he need to be in love to be happy? Like, wh why, why do we need this? Like, seriously, it's just in the context of Disney's The Hunchback of Notre Dame, it really does break a massive purpose to this. And honestly, yeah, like, as a fan, like, honestly, as a fan, of the first hunchback. I hate this. 
Like, seriously, do we need, we don't need this. Quasimodo doesn't need to be in love. This just breaks, ah, just everything about this. Ah, fudge. Ah, I need, I, I need some time to breathe. I need some time to relax. I just probably need to revisit the first hunchback because this is just not doing any favors to me.